the dog likes you. Oh, no, How like, could the dog not like? She's a certified animal whisperer. And she's she an. She we're here with an Whitney ally. Cummings. That's and Whitney Cummings. Also, she can tell there's a baby coming. Friend I, of animals. They definitely. She can. was pregnant when I got her. Are oh, you worried that you will puppies. love your baby less than a horse? I already do, and I already will, and I'm not worried about it. A stray giraffe. I mean, isn't that possible <laughs> that you look down at your child and go, if you were only a giraffe? I love a giraffe I've never met way more than my unborn child. <laughs> and I think it's good. I think we love children too much. I think that is actually the problem in our culture. Right. We, we love animals not enough. Uh-huh. And children a little bit too much. Correct. Um, Whitney Cummings is here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Finally, it, we it, did it. I know. It's the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. And Whitney, how you're like a week away? I'm three weeks away. Wait, oh you God. are? Yep. That's so funny because you're like, no, I'm about to take some time off. I have some shows <laughs> in Austin in 10 days. And then after that, I am I'm probably drowning. giving birth on Southwest. It's, it <laughs> could happen. I am flying dangerously close to my delivery date, but I need a, I need a good story for Leno. Are you, in fact, doing the road right now? I'm not doing the road. I'm just going to Austin to do a couple podcasts. Like, that is to, the, that is do you the, oh, usually that is the road. hold the mic like two feet underneath your mouth? I or? don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Isn't it funny how we can... I'm how long sorry. are you? 20 years comedy? 25? <laughs> what do you think? 25 years comedy? I don't... Wait, I Tw- I'm 20. I might be a little... I knew I about you when I started. I definitely... Where's she going? Maybe 18 years. What, I started 2005. Too- What's that? That is maybe 18 years. 18 years? Are there, uh, well, don't really? you think I, it's funny? I started in 2002 and I thought you were there, but no, I guess, maybe I, I, remember, I guess you came in a couple years. I have some very vivid memories of watching Natasha <laughs> as I would like go to M Bar, like where I start. Like that's kind of like the first time I ever did stand up was at M Bar. You used to keep a pencil in your in your ponytail because you were always like, jotting, were, like down jotting down <laughs> jokes and running to a next show. You were like, you would go to like five shows in a night. Everybody was in awe. That's so weird. I feel like everybody was hustling back then. We, there were so many open mics then. Mm-hmm. But I remember one time Natasha was on stage with a half-ripped headshot of hers <laughs> with her jokes on the back. <laughs> Doing great, by the way. And she just went, uh, I'm just like on Wait, a date. Wait, that's da- funny. I and you were, that. Yeah, you were on a date. Yeah, and you, you were should, like, you why? You should do a half-baked idea from 22 years ago. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. It's like, you know, often I have all these old headshots. And she's haunted my entire pregnancy because you don't even remember this, but she used to, um, in one of her, I'm sure you did in a special, remember one time she was on stage and she went, you guys know it's weird? Babies have skeletons. You are not oh, the yeah. first female comedian to have told me that. Like, and I two think other about it all the that. time. <laughs> I think about it all the time. Yeah. And then there was a time there was a, um, there was a show on Melrose at some like Greek restaurant, like oh, in boy. the back, but it was just comics doing stand up for comics. And you were like working out a new premise. It was just so funny. A bunch of comics were sitting around and you're like, what's this thing where guys do where they go? And you just started like fist oh, pumping that, all the guys. That's how long ago it was, yeah, Whitney. No, oh, that was, fist pumping had the just fist come bump was new, it had just come out. Wait, wait, so you've been doing comedy as long as fist bumps. It's a, <laughs> that's kind of cool. That, that means you're a vet. That's it. I, that's, I, I'm proud of that. Yeah. yeah I was... Uh, I feel bad because you're wearing a black dress and our and Blanche just blasted all over your chest. Oh, I know. It's you know. Look, I'll tell you what. No, I'm used to it. Do you want a roller or something? No, okay, Matt. That's, yes. That's she came clean. I just want everybody <laughs> to know. Whitney came sparkling clean, and our and our dog has sullied her, has violated her. Whitney, you're an animal expert. What kind of dog should we get? We're thinking German Shepherd. You made a face when I said that. Why? Already. Why? Why? Here's the reason why for me. She Moshe just you love lawsuits. No, Moshe wants. <laughs> a As a Jew, <laughs> nothing makes me hornier than being litigated. Against Okay. Okay. It's, wants, it's not an open relationship if you're going on court dates. They don't count. <laughs> he wants a gun, the dog. I want a gun you can pet. Then you want a Malinois. A Malinois is too scary. Also, just get child. a gun. Don't get bullets. Your dog does kind of love me. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> um, I would. Uh, Malinois scares you? Yeah, they'll eat my child. A Malinois just will Well, eat Malinois my aren't nugget. so inbred, though, and they don't have the hip dysplasia that mm. uh, German Shepherds do. do they How ever... about we don't get a dog that's like... Uh, I would get a mix. I wouldn't get a purebred. I definitely wouldn't get a purebred. You know, we have a lot of people in our mentions because, Natasha, we said we, we crowdsourced the audience here at the Endless Honeymoon podcast, kind of what we're doing with you. Uh-huh. What kind of dog should we get? And we said we'd, we don't want to get a pit. And Which, by the way, I would rather say out loud who I'm voting for than the kind of dog I think you should get. <laughs> you know how much trouble I'm going to get in? <laughs> I, well, I straight up we said we don't want to get a pit we didn't say why we didn't say we you think can get a pit ba- mix we didn't say anything we just said we don't want that I got people in my yeah. mansion saying that sounded like bigotry I didn't I say, was about to say it out loud but I didn't say <laughs> there's anything wrong with them yep. I just said 
I prefer. You just said I'm a pussy. I, <laughs> just say just it the way it. you need to say it. I'm a, yeah, I'm a huge pussy. Yeah. And I want all I want. I, here's what I really want. I want yes. a gun that you can pet that will run that will scamper <laughs> in the ocean with me. Okay. I want it to scamper in the sea. Okay. I want us to be surfing and look over and go. There's my little. Are you my... doing it? Getting it for protection as well? Because the big thing that protects is just the barking. You can also get. That's what I'm saying. That's what just, I'm telling him. It's really the barking. It's but, like barking handles half of your problems. It could be a golden retriever. Okay. Hold and on. tall. Hold a on. Lab. I'm gonna push back here. Now barking handles. I'm going to say 28% of your problem. Okay, but which the- Pew Research Center did you do this study <laughs> at? I love when men make up statistics. I love talking about... That to wasn't men. made when up. Like, like 60% of men are keto in LA. And you're like, that sounds true, but... Uh, that is podcasting, by the way. Yeah, you're you're, you're, you're so like scrolling true. through Instagram. You go, I had, I had no idea that the entire educational system of America was created by the Nazi party. And then you Google it. You go, oh, it wasn't. Oh, it was just a <laughs> confident man telling a story. So uh, but... No, okay. Twenty eight percent is a statistic that I made up, but I'm saying twenty eight percent of of deterrence is the bark. But then the burglar has merely to do a chin up over the fence and see, oh, it's a golden retriever. Let's go in. Let's rape Natasha. Okay. Let's kidnap the child and steal okay. the baby. Honey, DVD I'm player. like almost out of the rape zone. I no, hope that's not no, your honey, main concern. No, no, honey, don't you ever say that about yourself. <laughs> don't ever say that about yourself. You got a lot of good years left in you. Thank you. Um. Okay. So you think that burglars in Los Feliz? Burglars. Yes. Oh, is that what? Yeah, Mara- no, no, bur- marauders. Specifically, <laughs> cat burglars. Marauders. I like the term burglars. I think that's great. <laughs> the hamburglars. Yes, the hamburglar. I don't know. It over. feels like the burglars out here are vegan. I don't feel like they're doing a push up <laughs> over they, the. You think they physically yeah. can't get to I don't the chin up? They can. <laughs> I think we're good. Um, barking, to, but I mean, what are they called? Golden retrievers. Like they're not going to be like come right in and rape my mom. You think? You th- I think a germ, uh, golden retriever will wag its tail and lick the, and lick the hand and or ass of the rapist <laughs> in your house. If I'm gonna, it's gonna lube up Natasha's pussy. It's gonna go lick her pussy to assist. I here's what I'll say. I have the most incredible dog. A um, he is a Great Dane runt mixed with lab and maybe a tiny bit of pit. Mm. He is the most terrifying dog on the planet. Who is the sweetest thing? And I feel like a Great Dane mix would really match the aesthetic of your home because mm. they're tall. They're very regal. Tall scares people. Angular, mm. regal, and people his, are dumb. Yeah. So Bark if you have is, like if if I'm walking and I'm already short, if I'm walking with like a lightweight tall dog. People think that it could like hurt them. Do you know that Alonzo Bowden drives a mini but has a Great Dane? He's the largest <laughs> comedian in the world. He has the largest dog in the world and the smallest possible car. Wait, we have to have him on the podcast. I love him. We should have I him didn't, on the I podcast. forget about Mini Coopers. Every time I see one, I'm like, huh. That's what I have. Is That that makes sense, No, I though. had one. I, I switched. I feel like I remember that. Was it green? Mm, I had, green? I had a, you, what do you mean you had one? You sw- are you trying to like throw? I'm trying to not say sk- my car on the podcast in case people see you driving by and jump into the car. In, I mean, I don't it, know. It, you guys really are afraid of getting raped and murdered. <laughs> What's going on? It's called being Jewish. I Whitney. don't block my doors. <laughs> like I don't. Look. You don't block your doors, but you live on like a <laughs> compound in like the tallest mountain in the hills. <laughs> I mean, don't I, you, you live far, like kind of on a compound, right? Far away um, from. I, I, I live a like kind of in, yeah, at the end of a cul de sac, like in a holler. I heard two co- in a holler. We don't have hollers. <laughs> I live in, in a LA. holler. I really do. I live, I like I, butcher I, holler. I do, it truly. <laughs> meat hook holler. I do hail from West Virginia, Virginia ancestry. I'm not an ocean person. I'm not like in the You're mixed a Loretta person. Lynn song. You know? I'll tell you what. And then so I found this place that was like in a mountain and I was like, this is where I thrive. Mm-hmm. I heard two comedians at the store. That's the comedy store for the folks listening. Um, talking about how they don't like wearing their Rolexes. These are males. They don't uh, like So Bert and Tom. Um, it wasn't Bert and Tom. It was. I, I, it was uh, I Dean Del Rey and Kevin Christie. You got one. I'm for sure you've nailed one. So far you've got one. We can keep going. They were saying they don't want to wear their Rolexes on stage because they're afraid goons will follow them from the Wait, stage. Wait, what's a goon? You know, it's a burglar. It's, a, it's like a burglar who's Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, does that have racial content? You know, 28% of burglars are goons. <laughs> we'll follow them home. The, that, so Brad Ernst will follow them home. To their apartment. To their <laughs> <laughs> where they keep their Rolexes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, what, uh, what do you think about that? That's an interesting idea that they're because I was thinking they don't want to be like well, blinging. Well, here's the thing: rap rappers 
don't they wear medallions and they wear Rolexes mm-hmm. and then they get robbed. That happens. Now, if I'm a robber of rappers, <laughs> I'm going to th- and I find out about stand up comedians. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, we're switching fields. All like, you have to do if you want to rob a comedian is DM them and say, hey, we have a new room going. <laughs> <laughs> Swing by. They'll come to your house. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, then yeah. You can just it's in our basement. And yeah. My Malinois. Will it pays you. nothing. <laughs> come by. We'll pay you. Inv- we'll video your set and send it to you. And then you can just steal from them. I don't. I'm fascinated by it because guys, you guys don't get to, you guys don't get to have jewelry. Like when you start making money, you always look very cool. You Thank can accessorize. You. you can wear a ring. Oh wait, that, because because like guys don't get to wear bracelets or jewelry or earrings. I, I get told it. her I want a bracelet for Hanukkah. That's cool. I Why don't you guys do the Cartier love bracelets, the ones that are like the handcuffs? Oh, because that sounds disgusting, I guess. Why not? That, that's part of, part of why I wouldn't Oh, do God it. forbid people at Burning Man know you're taken. <laughs> um, no one's really taken at Burning Man. <laughs> that's a good point. But it's like the cuff. Have you seen it? You don't think it's cool? Like a vintage one? Let's look one? it up. Cartier. Cartier cuff? You mean that little thin one? It's like a... It's like a, um, a Cartier love bracelet? Yeah, it's... it's I you, think I'm going to want to take that off. You use a screwdriver to put it on. Oh, Ooh. you can't take it off? Without oh, a little mini screwdriver. That's interesting. That's and cute. All divorce attorneys in LA have one of those mini <laughs> screwdrivers that they start with. Um, but isn't that like guys when they start making money? What are you supposed to spend it on? You know, it's like you have basically shoes, watches, it's outfits. You can tell. You can tell when a comedian starts doing better. They all start dressing in a particular way. Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah, but yeah, wouldn't yeah. a man rather jump a woman and get her gold jewelry than jump a, a woman? I'm saying in terms of the men are. Are afraid of getting jumped by a goon. Oh, oh, oh! You're saying the why Rolex? Don't, why not the right? <laughs> but, but I love the idea of you getting robbed for your love bracelet. And you're like, um, I'm sorry. There's like it's a, a screwdriver. screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the screwdriver? Well, it's back at home. I'm so sorry. They put you in the trunk. They go to Home Depot. They buy. You guys have tiny Cartier <laughs> screwdrivers. It's just We've so, got I'm a Jew in our trunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're just so in love. I just. Been, <laughs> Um, I what were you, oh oh why wouldn't you rob a, why wouldn't the rapper robbers no rob no but female why are, comedians well I don't know yeah I, but you know female comedians or fem I don't I not I female comedians people who wear gold I I think this is less is this because of the war and do, yes, and do comedians because that's what they took first you mean my anxiety well no I just mean is this a new thing that you're afraid of the rape and pillaging no listen here's the real wait reality. wait can I just ask a question first please do, do comedians think that the, their fans are going to steal their jewelry? It's not fans. Okay. I'm, a, I was I'm, just a, I'm a rapper robber, right? A rapper? Oh, you rob Here's rappers? Here's who I am. I'm okay. a rapper robber, <laughs> and I make my living, much like Omar in the Wire, robbing tough men. Okay. And I used to rob Young Thug and NBA Young Boy. Yep. But then I find out that Dean Del Rey... <laughs> Has a Rolex, yeah. and I'm like, why am I going after this guy with an entourage? I don't think it's the same model. How much is a How much is a Rolex? A lot. You can get a vintage Rolex at Wanna Buy a Watch for seven grand, five grand, seven grand. Okay, a, that's not worth killing. Me, yeah, but yes, it is. Yeah, but also, five by grand. the way, the ones that the rappers are wearing sometimes they're like custom stuff. You can't really sell them. That They'll find true. out. That is true. When you know you what I mean? Try to go to a pawn shop. And it's all diamonds, and it says this d- watch was made for NBA Young Boy. Yeah, and totally. We'll be able to you do disassemble the forensics. it for parts. So Ooh, a, a comedian, to your point, is actually Ooh. you're more likely to get robbed because you can actually resell it. It's a be- it's a better watch for the on the for the goon market. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ah, this is an. You're not going to be able point. to sell Flavor Flav's bedazzled <laughs> clock. Everyone's going to know. <laughs> No, you know what I mean? Nice it's piece. in Craigslist. Yeah, this like everyone's nice piece. Who did you get this uh, necklace <laughs> alarm up. clock from? Yeah, yeah. on offer up. <laughs> First dibs. Um, Whitney, are you mm-hmm. w- when you think about having a child? What is we didn't the solve the dog thing? Oh yeah. Oh, the dog thing. Yeah. Okay, here's my fear. Okay. Yeah. What are you afraid of? I, dogs. I'm uh, afraid of dogs. I. Um, generally think that the world is less safe than it used to be. That could be an algorithmic yep. uh, blip that I'm just being paranoid. Mm-hmm. I also go on the road. You also have uh, more at stake than you ever have. How about that? Well, for sure, you have more to lose. Yeah. This child. You have more to lose. I have more. I have more flesh for the dog to bite. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> But when I go on the road, like Natasha likes to go on these long walks in the woods. Sure. And she goes by herself. Sure. And she contemplates divorce, I would assume. Yep, yep, yep. And I want her to yep. be protected while she thinks about leaving me. You okay, know? Great, so that's great. part of it too. So when the burglar does the chin up, I want them to look and say, no, thank you. Okay. And when the, the woods rapist walks by Natasha, I want him to say, no, Where thank you. Where are these you. woods? What woods? 
These are that's private. Whitney. You're the one that makes her go camping all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Out there, we have some secret woods that we'll tell you about. Okay, we're gonna tell you off camera. Oh yeah, let's tell everyone where the woods you walk in alone are. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. That. What's your route? What's your time? <laughs> Let me just start. What's your time? What do you? Do? What time do you generally go? <laughs> okay. By yourself. Okay. In the wo- anyway, you know what I'm saying? Yes, on the I do. Road. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't you? You know. But you're taking the animal on the road. The dog on the road. No, he's saying, saying when he's on the when road, on the I'm road. here alone. Okay. And I FaceTime in. I say, can I talk with Rin Tin Tin? Okay. And I say. Is everything cool? Okay. Yeah. You must have had some scary stalkers in your day. Uh Uh-huh. Here's the thing about most of them. Most of them are fucking dorks. Of course. That think they're like married to us or when I had blue hair, I guess there was a anime lady with blue hair that she I, was like she did it for me and people thought we were in a simulation and that i was her sure. and got, some guys would like show up at my house i like just called their moms like they, <laughs> you can you can kind of tell you're like oh that's pretty cool you were kind of ahead of the game i Whitney. was yeah i was like because you can't you your synthetic human i can here's the thing most people aren't gonna go to jail to kill you do you know what i mean that is cold comfort whitney i think <laughs> <laughs> the narcissism of like they're gonna kill me you know but you know what it is it's the meth head homeless people that don't know who you are and the meth rando, head homeless it's rando. the randos that I mean homeless the homeless people here are on Adderall and they're on roller skates with machetes uh-huh. I mean they're gonna it's gonna be a random drive by I definitely have like crazy you know people screaming outside of my house a lot yeah and I feel like a dog would make them I remember a guy was like sitting like on our stoop and yes. I wanted to like tell him to get up but yep. I'm like I don't really want to tell him that yes. but if i had a big dog yes the dog would tell him for us yes that's right you know wolf, wolf. and if it was a golden retriever whitney oh. really a golden retriever would take it for a walk and this guy sitting on our stoop is going to be like i should probably well you know going. where i stand on this i have three pimples in my yeah. house so, um, <laughs> and a donkey but also but what, you do, <laughs> but what you don't want is a dog that's going to bite someone and yeah. ruin your life that is and true. the very thing that's going to supposed to protect you is going to take your house from you whitney now that you're Wait, here I have one more and question making for this whitney, well hold on let me i just need a legal binding contract okay so now yep. that you're here and making this proclamation what about like a snake would you be willing mm-hmm. to accept to just accept like respons- financial responsibility <laughs> for the should dog. a dog ever bite someone. It's just- so annoying because that really is when dogs bite other dogs or bite humans, It's the, I, they come to me and then I try to like rehome them. Uh-huh. You oh know? my God, that's your pet project? Right. Well, it's like if they just make a mistake or something. You know, like I had my ear bitten off by a dog. And off? They sewed it back on. It's, it looks can- great. Whitney. Yeah, it's, it's back. It's, it's Whitney. Beautiful. He just made a mistake. He just, you know. It was Whitney. Just, I know. When they're taken from their mother too young, they don't learn how to use in their mouth. Understand. Their He's mouth good- is their hand. He's a good guy. He just sometimes gets said, a little emotional. <laughs> I then understand. you do like an aggression test to see, and then I rehomed him. I don't it. think you should do stuff like that when you have a kid now. Yeah, no, no, I can't. I can't. Put do it that. to rest. You yeah. had a you I'll rehome the kid. <laughs> <laughs> but Natasha, you had a. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Yes. No, it's not. It wasn't going anywhere. No, Natasha, you had a question. I cut you off with my legally binding contract that Whitney agreed to. <laughs> I didn't even get that. She's going to pay no matter whatever happens with the dog that we get. She will pay all of the financial damages. She oh agreed to that, and, and it's binding. <laughs> all right. Listen, uh, Whitney, you're pregnant. I never thought I would see it. You. That's really the feedback I'm getting. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> it really I is. I feel like you're a natural mom, and people I always knew this day would come. People are stunned. You naturally are just this pregnant woman now. That's it's weird. amazing. You're the first person I ever heard talk about freezing eggs. We No, no, no. We were there together. We were in a trailer on the set of This Means War with Dana Fox. Jenny Slate was in there, too. And Dana Fox was like, you two need to cle- freeze your eggs. And you're like, what do you mean? We're 17. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was We were together. Yes, I remember. And that's when I decided to do it. I did it too, and I have a child from it. But you finally are pregnant, and you actually didn't even need to use those eggs. Or maybe raw dog, right? Just read. Just we can cut that off. We can cut that. No, please do. No, because you think Whitney wants us to cut out a detail? (laughs) Have you noticed her online profile? She's pretty open. It's, did you, when you had kids, change anything about what you talked about publicly? There's a, like last night I got in a wormhole and I'm like, let me just delete some of these, she, just to make did. sure I don't I don't lose custody. She has an anxiety. Oh, you mean like saying I do drugs or things know. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I kind of am just like, is my kid gonna see this? I don't know. I sort of am thinking a little bit differently now. Well, you I'm are the think- one that did a special on OnlyFans, so your OnlyFans, <laughs> by the way, TV. I'm just saying, if your kid looks up, TV. ooh, I love mom. Let me see her some of her work. <laughs> Only fans, it's a <laughs> click away before her uh, their innocence is completely destroyed. I will be live streaming the birth to pay for his um, <laughs> nanny. I will say, though, that talking about her now that she's five mm. going on six, she doesn't like that. Like she gets if she if she hears me say something that, that she said to someone 
And she has so not given permission. That's when you explain how the First Amendment works in this country. Yep. But she gets You're really public, mad. You're in public. You have no right to privacy. I, it's miss. a tricky one. She does. If she knew that I was like saying things that she did not say on stage, she would be very mad. You know what's interesting? Someone said but this. But she's five. Someone said this to me the other day. Chills down my spine. Hmm. Someone went, how do you feel about the fact that you're having a Nepo baby? Oh, come on. That's <laughs> I was great. Like, oh, what? Oh, the poor baby won't have to go through 30 years of humiliation. Oh, I, they will. Neglect. <laughs> I will find a way. I mean, Will Smith hasn't made the best choices in the last couple of years, but he did say one time on Oprah, uh, he was talking about when Willow or the, who's the guy? William? The, oh, the, the, the young man? Yeah. The, uh, uh, Jaden. Mr. Jaden. Was like seven or something and came home from school and was like, Dad, this one of the kids at school told me that we're rich. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, no. I'm rich. <laughs> You're poor. That's very funny. Yeah. I heard Damon Wayans Jr. told us a great story on The Champs a long time ago that he was in a fight in the street. Like him and his friends were in a fight with another group and they were all like street fighting. And then in the middle of it, someone stopped and wait, wait a minute. Aren't you a Wayans? Like the enemy. <laughs> and the, the fight stopped. He's like, yeah. And they go, why are you fighting? Let's get. And they just. We that was the end. <laughs> Even they didn't know which one. Yeah. They're like, we don't want anything to do with this. Yeah. A Nepo baby. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, it will be a privileged child. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> That's true. It'll have you, to. You're we'll already see. you're already planning to be hard on your child. I think it's important. I think really? it's. I, I, we'll I, we'll see. I don't know. I I I think a little adversity is good. I see people that are trying to be friends with their kids, and I have a friend whose kids bite people. I'm yeah. just like, this is insane. And she's like, what are we? What did I say about that? I'm like, you have got to bite this kid back. Well, you're a roaster. Maybe you could just emotionally give just it some humiliate. adversity. Yeah, I just a definitely, bit. in my blood, want to make my daughter an ice cream sundae every time anything goes wrong. Uh, <laughs> but don't you and think there's also... And it's a natural instinct. It's like with dog training, too. It's like, it's like there has to be a time where when there's literally danger coming... It's not about you liking me at this point. You know what I mean? I, my, but I'm not doing it because I want her to like me. I'm doing it because I don't want her to experience pain. Yes, Ever. but my see, my dad was always, you're going to get your ass kicked out there. I'd rather you get your ass kicked in here first. So your dad beat you. So that's I, I mean, something look, to explore. Wait, Moshe. <laughs> no, but he was very I like, that's not life true. is not fair. He... I, I'm on your dad's side, and that's the kind of the, the primary. Um, he was a, te I mean, terrible at, at at being a father. Oh, he was a bad father. But yeah, but okay. but I think he did a lot of good things. I think as you get older, you got to be able to <laughs> go like, you know what? As I look at a lot of people that got unconditional love, they're a mess. Okay, a lot of my friends that just had good childhoods are a mess. And I look, my dad did a lot of good things. I think by accident, and mm. one of them was like preparing me for the world. Yeah, I I I think. I don't know. That sounds very emotionally bereft. You know, it's like that's not really gearing you up for success. Like he did a couple things. Like one thing that actually I look back and it was like seemed very odd at the time. He said he was like when I was like 14, 15, he was like, I know you're going to do drugs. I know you're going to drink. Like I'm not delusional about that. And he was like, so if you're going to get in a car with somebody who's been drinking or doing drugs, if I find out about it, you'll never leave the house again. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, you're not going to college. Not that he paid for my college, but it seemed like a but real threat a at the lie. time. Yeah. And an, he, so an, an idle threat. He was like, yeah, I'm not paying, <laughs> but at the time it felt real enough. Sure. Right. And he's like, you're never leaving the house again. Da, da, da. And he's like, but if you call me, I will come pick you up. If you're drunk or high, won't well, not, no punishment, zero. As long as you call me to come get you. And then I did it one time. I was like, I'm getting caught with a drunk person. What do I, he said, I'll come get you. And I was high or something. And then absolutely no punishment. So he taught me not to keep secrets from him. That's really good. And and I feel like I was such a manipulative, drug addicted kid that I would have just started to use that. I would have just gotten high and then been like, Oh yeah, come get Dad, me, come I'm get high. me. Dad, I'm he's, high. he's just Dad, your I'm Uber high. driver. Dad, every time you get high, you, you're gonna get into a car with somebody. But there well, was there was something weird about the fact that like it didn't get a rise out of him. Like he was kind of just like not phased by it or impressed. And I was like, oh okay, well weed and alcohol is like not that fun. It's not, you know what I mean? It just kind of like took the like I don't know sexiness out of it or something. What would your mom have done if you had called and said, I'm I'm drunk and high and I'm about to get into a drunk person's car? To be honest, she never talk to me about any of it mm. and I got so exceedingly lucky because I just hung out with str all straight edge people no one drank and so I was I always wanted to stay out late and go to like shows and cool like bands but I never drank or did alcohol and I thought that was lame like what um, bros did mm -hmm. people who who fist bumped fist bumpers <laughs> 
<laughs> I just it was bumpers. I just the reason it was so funny. I feel like I'm not trying to go like let me bring up. It's like you were like all dressed up and in heels, and everyone was like sitting on pillows on the floor, and it was just so <laughs> funny. It was like you doing this to like David Taylor. Like it was just funny. Whitney, I'm curious. What are you afraid of? What's your primary fear? That's a great of, question. About, about That's this a deep child? Qu- Oh, about the child. Well, well my vagina we can, we can, tearing in childbirth. Oh, dead serious. Uh, physi- oh, sure. That's yeah. a very reasonable. Oh my thing. god. Dead serious. I have to show you my C-section scar. Yes, please. I would love that. It's so nice. Oh, wait, I already did. I showed it to you. I showed it to you. I'll show it to you again. I was in a disassociative state. (laughs) I'd like a second gander. The crazy part about her C-section scar, it's so small, but it's it's formed perfectly as a swastika. And I don't understand how it happened. It seems like the doctor did it, to be honest with you. But it's beautiful. I don't get how something so big comes out of such a small uh, Because at the time, your body is like, it'll spring, oh. you know, it's like bigger than, and they just need a tiny area. And then it's like literally like an inch. It's so small. Because I'm fully dating pregnant. So I'm truly... Mm. Got to bounce back pretty fast. So you've been you've been like fucking new guys while you're <laughs> pregnant. That's pretty. While you're an advanced third term pregnant. You just say sleeping with this this one time. Uh, honestly, it seems it's hot. Like fucking makes it sound so much worse. It's definitely doggy style. That's well, what I it's see. Interesting because God. it's like you know when guys you're- are not deter. I think there's something guys or I'm having more guys ask me out now. I used to date a guy who but was always guys. turned they're, on they're by they're pregnant women. They're specific. They um well, there's maybe don't you feel like it helps us? Like uh, may, you maybe didn't need this. I feel like it softened me a little bit. Mm. I feel like I maybe came off too hard or you too do seem rough. Soft, softer. I don't know. People were always like, "You're intimidating," and you come off too independent, and guys don't like that. And now I'm just like, it slows you, know. you down a little bit physically. Yeah, yeah. even being slowed down physically, it just chills you out a little. Or maybe bit. I'm just like giving off a different energy oh, i don't know have you gone on a date with a guy and in the middle of it you realize <laughs> he, it's not just that he's not bothered by the fact that you're pregnant but that's why he's there <gasps> where he's you know he's doing a lot of rubbing and can i touch it it's no we don't really we kind of pretend it's not there there's not like do you want to feel the kick of some other guys but kids? obviously you have to immediately talk about the future because it's like you're about to have a baby but okay, so one, I don't want to get too like. Yes, it's definitely interesting. It's we, interesting. Well, but my, you're you my, really didn't get two just then because you what, went, you went very wide. What? You were, you didn't want to get too specific, yeah. and then you just said it's interesting. So we didn't get any. I, I just panicked. Well, whatever, I have something else I want to talk to in her your about. Mind just just came up. Give the woman some privacy in her final trimester. Because guys with kids are great about it. Mm-hmm. Like I, they know more than me that. about it. They know what to do. They know the whole drill. They're okay with the fact that my tits look like a map of the New York subway. <laughs> It is so Whitney, many you veins. Look beautiful. Thank you. Oh my gosh. And you're carrying it well. You're tall, of course. So I it think it's looks good. Amazing. I think we did the right thing. To oh have a yeah. Child? Yeah. We'll check in in six months. Okay. Whitney. You're yeah. you're gonna love it, and you're gonna hate it too. Listen uh-huh. to your body. What am I gonna hate? Well, I think <clears throat> if I, I think that you, if I'm to psychoanalyze you, Whitney, please. I think that you will have an interesting time making an adjustment to the demands. I bet it'll be great, but I think it'll be a challenge because you are such you are the like such an ambitious like person. You are a singular minded kind of like a mogul even I, I think is an, an unfair thing to say about you. Oh. And I think that the physical realities of a child will demand like this a, a new slowness. And I think that that will be interesting. But don't you think I was doing all that stuff because I was empty Setting yourself up. or just empty or, or you could also outsource inside? everything. Yeah. And still. Be but I a think I was. I was trying. Industry. I was trying to get famous and known to get love. Uh huh. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I was trying to get in. The, my dad would watch TV. Couldn't get his attention, and I was like, I got to get in the box. Well, I will to tell get you him. that my. So, that's my, why you called your latest special. I need to <laughs> ride home, right? <laughs> my values no, get in the box. have definitely shifted, and that's kind of a thing that starts to happen slowly, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you're like, wait. What do mm. what do I care about? I, it's not How what many I used more to care about. Tinder jokes am I gonna write? You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a point where you're like, God forbid I become interesting and have perspective, and you know. I was just talking to somebody the other day about childbirth, like the 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 anti childbirth people. You know, the people that are like, you know, I don't want kids, and and that. Don't you think it's me. irresponsible to bring a child into this world? By the way, that's not an unreasonable argument, but like, I was thinking about this, like. 
I think not having kids is a very reasonable position, very reasonable position, and it makes more, it's more reasonable with each passing year. But like the de- the thing that you dedicate yourself to, if you decide I'm going to be a no child person, uh-huh. off unless you're doing it because you're like I would be bad at the job, I would just be say I don't want to. But I get that you dedicate yourself to I want a further acquisition of freedom, and when you have a mm. child, this is my 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 opinion is what you're dedicating yourself is I want to dedicate my life to the further acquisition of love. It's like that's the dichotomy. Like, mm. is it freedom that I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to, or love? No, but you can still have love if you, you choose have both. freedom, and you can still love have is freedom. very freeing. You can still have freedom if you choose love. I'm just saying, what is going to be the primary focus of the rest of your life? Because yeah. that for sure, what you're saying really resonates with me. Is like. Once I had a kid, it rearranged all of the priorities where I was like, oh, I've been looking for like what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And now all of that is answered. It's this person. And that's a that's a daunting. It's a scary. And it's also a really empowering kind of feeling. It's like I, I know all of the answers of what's important. Yep. And it's this person. And I think that I also and not I obviously I'm not having a kid to you know, fix these addictive tendencies, but it's like as a like codependent in recovery, all the same shit as AA and it's an addiction, mothering animals and caretaking humans. And I was always attracted to that and dating people that I had to rescue and mother. I'm like, I want to mother something. And I'm just doing it to people, which is like insulting and not helping them grow. Like, let me just do it to something that actually needs it. It's destiny. I think I'll be less crazy in other parts of my life if I can kind of just go like, oh, this is something that I'm like naturally kind of want to do. But it's weird to say that because you're like, if I'm a woman that's like, I'm naturally born to do this or I naturally love caretaking something. It's like you're not a feminist or something if you don't if you say that. But listen, everyone wants to identify with something. I want like a little monkey. Are you going to circumcise? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just no, kidding. I'm glad this has been a real, this has actually been the biggest uh, thing I'm vacillating over. My brother's yeah. an intactivist. I'm definitely, oh yeah, I think he texted me. <laughs> he texted you that? <laughs> I think he's, he's very passionate about it. I think he's it. DMing me. I'm hey, not even Whitney, joking. Just FYI, I, I am an intactivist. Because I think we, something, ha- did we do something together and then he started, does he like tag people on Instagram stories? Possibly. Okay. So it's tricky. I'm definitely not going to do like, a party for it mm-hmm. where everyone claps you're just gonna get the great dane mix to take I'm a little gonna- nibble <laughs> <laughs> it's a tr- it's a very tricky one well listen before we t- take a call i do want to ask you because I-, I had this like three week old f- or this three week flu we had like a family flu and you told me to drink apple cider vinegar and hot water and i did it <laughs> and it made me better and i f- and the- well it actually made me able to perform because i was in san diego all weekend oh, that's right and i was like sick all day i also said take sudafed <laughs> Right. Well, to, to actually go on stage. And then so I you took, could breathe. Yeah. I took Dayquil to, okay, to perform. Good. But then in the day, I would drink the apple cider vinegar. But you just told me when you came in here, because you've been kind of obsessed with what's natural, mm-hmm. cleaning and everything. Oh, as pregnant. soon as I got pregnant, I started looking up the Johnson & Johnson lawsuits, the talcum and the asbestos. I mean, mm-hmm. we used to just put baby powder on babies all day (laughs) like it just had asbestos in it lululemon yoga pants has they're bad the forever chemicals in that well the guy that started it you know why he called it lululemon no because he thought it'd be funny to hear asians pronounce it no he didn't swear to god that's rough like what is wrong with everybody dude everybody (laughs) wait but isn't everything going to kill us not everything definitely water is fluoride and plastic water bottles the microplastics like astroturf that your kids play on it's like that's made of tires with the forever chemicals it's just like but stress about this stuff is bad for you also so it's kind (laughs) of like you got to just take what you like and leave the rest but it it does get frustrating when you're trying so hard to get things that are not sunscreen is worse for you than the sun at this point most sunscreens like that is the kind of shit that drives me nuts but like i've gotten really into looking at the corporations that own the natural products like Mm -hmm. clorox bought burt's bees which you know like shit like that so what does that mean and then you said that um the rags rags, which i love bill gates who i honestly i have umbrella insurance so i'm just gonna go for it i'm not scared of this motherfucker I mean, he already owns the um, McDonald's, the French fries. Like he owns. You have a paperclip tattooed on your wrist. <laughs> what I does wouldn't. That I, mean? Well, he, he's the Microsoft guy. That's, that's that's a, a, <laughs> so you're affiliated, whether you like it or not. I get that it's a safety pin, but I the mean, joke I am like available to marry him. But um, the he bought. Well, he basically, available to marry. He started this company that puts something called Appeal 
on apples. I don't know if he's just like so obsessed that he didn't invent Apple computers. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> he like has to be in the Apple. I gotta game. be in the Apple game. Yeah, somewhere. somehow he's just like he has this obsession with apples, and he, it's called Appeal, and it it's like a schmegma that covers apples so that they stay fresh for like you know a couple months, which most things that are organic do have that on it, which is no good. Um, but so I'm like I'm kind of like off fruit just in general. You're so, not eating fruit. No, there's like so many pesticides. What does he get out of Kale putting pesticides? Is real, it's on. to keep it fresh. So, so you what? go into Costco and your you apples can keep are still them forever. Fresh. Yeah, kind of thing. Is that forever bad? apples. Because most apples, naturally organic, last two three days. How do we know that? Okay, my my stepfather is an entomologist in the pesticide regulation department of the state of California. Get him on the line. And uh, I could call him, but I think the podcast, uh, just in terms of riffing, might take a bit of a nosedive. I don't now. <laughs> Um, but he, his thing he's a very or, thoughtful man. His thing with organic is. is that you have to you have to suss out what are we talking about when we talk about organic. Some organic remedies, according to my stepdad, uh-huh. and you can you can tag him on Instagram stories. Uh, he's also an intactivist. Between, I was going to say between the intactivist and the pedi- the like fucking pesticide. Well, guy. My brother's also a talented rapper. Um, and an Italian. Uh, <laughs> a, a goon. A goon. <laughs> yeah, he is a goon. He says that some of the organic remedies are are more harmful than the than the pesticide. And some obviously some pesticides are awful. Uh-huh. But is, I know people are going to be like, oh, he's just a show for like big which pesticides. ones, for example. Well, how, come on. You think I, I uh, question uh, uh, further? Some of the organic remedies are worse. He's like, you need to talk. Well, we need to talk about what we're talking about when sure, we talk sure. about organic. Because organic doesn't mean healthy. It just That's means, true. It means that they did something And else. I believe it only means 98%. Here, according to here's USDA. what I'm worried about. Last month, someone told me Cheerios and Cheerios products cause cancer. And I had, mm. I buy Cheerios every week. Mm. And then also our gardener because was of the spraying. GMOs. I guess. I don't know. Cheerios and then, causes cancer. There's also, yeah, because yeah. there's also GMOs in there, which is very, I mean, most of us have Roundup. No, not no, sure. Cheerios, crackers, all these crackers general cause meals. cause cancer? Well, like a lot of the packaged crackers and then you know it doesn't crack crackheads are the healthiest people (laughs) (laughs) they're doing fine oh you're saying crack don't crack yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's funny you guys have to watch that boozy video of him he's talking about how crack like all his crackheads are doing great fentanyl you die but he's like go back (laughs) he's like promoting crack he's promoting crack yeah opposed to fentanyl but yeah there's a lot of stuff that's like just real bad news that is like masquerading as 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 healthy which is just i guess like i'm in some nesting mode or in some hypervigilant mode because i'm pregnant but yeah so apple cider vinegar which i you know drink every morning clean sinuses so good for you um uh bill gates bought and is using his appeal apples to fucking fuck up our healthy tonics that's kind of fucked up well we don't know that he has ill intent toward the vinegar he perhaps is as oh. big of an aficionado as you are, Whitney. I keep forgetting that billionaires aren't evil. <laughs> They're not. De fact, co- correlation what? is you not causation. You know that he like breeds mosquitoes and like releases <laughs> them, right? He doesn't so, breed. But what do you think? He, <laughs> he breeds mosquitoes in order to... Google fruit? it. AlexJones.net. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Pull now that we've got a real source on the line. <laughs> Speaking of making Listen, up wait, statistics. wait, wait, wait. But before you, but are you, were you about to transition? I was, I'm no, I was going to say, I love Bill Gates. I love George Soros. <laughs> and Jeffrey Epstein is a misunderstood <laughs> uncle. Listen, the fact that everyone is not talking about the class war is yeah. a pity. Yeah. And it, it just is, is like any kind of food that's like cheap in a wrapper. It's just like, it's so unfortunate. There's the, like, we don't need to be as sick as we are. Yeah. It's wild. So how do they stay healthy though then? Who, Who? are they? The billionaires. What they want us sick. Yeah. So they can control us, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, this seems totally made up, you guys. <laughs> well, no, I think it's just they <laughs> make the same they just make a oh lot of God. money. Oh my god. If you were a conspiracy theorist, Moshe, I would so like Wait, be on I board. say twenty eight percent of deterrence <laughs> is the bark. And you guys call me on the mat for making things up, but you're like, billionaires want to keep us sick through grains and vinegar. That's true. I mean, we know it's that. Bad vinegar. Not untrue. <laughs> well listen, <laughs> don't get me started on chemtrails. I, I've been looking, I've been reading this book, so I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, it's called Soap and Soul. It's by mm-hmm. Lisa Bronner, and she taught me on here. She's like, "Oh, mm-hmm. Doctor Bronner's," because I've Her always dad. liked their their um, liquid soap, and it's Castile soap, uh-huh. which is different. It has no animal fats or anything. It's like made from olive oil essentially, mm-hmm. and basically you can use it for everything. So she has these like two things, and it was like a quarter cup of Doctor Bronner's 
14 or 40 drops of tea tree oil and then water and that's your cleaner for everything yeah in your so house. i've been doing that in the house and it's kind of smelling really good and yeah. feeling and she said the tea tree oil makes it but like why be but spraying? you don't get that buzz you get from windex that's true fabuloso oh, will get you God. if you stop getting high just get fabuloso uh, and you dude, will feel fabuloso i went back to a gas car mm. and you like the oh buzz? my god oh i go god. to the gas station filling it up i'm like <laughs> Yeah. Fuck you, Elon Musk. Like, uh, I'm not getting that high. I was wondering why you had that hose from your exhaust pipe into your driver's door. So I'm like, in the old days, women used to put gasoline as a perfume to show that they were rich. Ooh. Because, you know, it was like the 20s, and, like, that meant you, like, had money that you were in a car. I, um, uh, speaking of class warfare, <laughs> the coolest thing about Dr. Bronner's is that the highest, the CEO of Dr. Bronner's is never paid, never allowed to make more than 16 times what the lowest paid worker at the company is. Duh! And if more companies were like that, we would be is in a Is that why they more... haven't introduced a new scent in a while? Yeah, they can't afford well, it. Well, you, <laughs> you can dilute your, you can customize it with essential oils and they only uh, use essential oh, oils okay. with their stuff. So I did just get their baby clothing wash. And I use the unscented baby stuff for most stuff because my daughter has sensitive skin. So mm -hmm. the light blue unscented one you can kind of use for anything. Did you change the way you ate when you were pregnant? Uh, mm, I just ate a lot. Mm -hmm. What about you? Have you changed yes, the way you eat? Yes, I have. Dramatically. You eat, more, right? dramatically. You eat? You eat uh, nothing but Cheerios and... Uh, I'm <laughs> and astroturf. Yeah, yeah, astroturf and chemtrails. And yoga right? pants. <laughs> um, I've kind of been eating mostly meat and eggs at least third trimester, which that is kind of wild. And sourdough. I'm not craving carbs that's not like sourdough. It, is that I'm trying uh, to not do rice. I, it's I'm just trying to I'm just trying to listen to my body. Oh, that's beautiful. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh my god, I just had a vision. Of what? You're going to be like, "You know what? I'm going to hang out with my baby. I'm getting the fuck out of LA." Oh, I've been trying. And Where I just see you and I see you like returning, but I just see you on like a little bit of like Have you ever seen those pictures of Pamela Anderson in her Malibu like Oh god. Like she's she just seems so happy. No, you hate I it. Just, I don't see happiness when I see photos of her. No, I I'm just saying she, she seemed like she has her nature. Maybe it'll be at Oh, your she house. does have like a dot like a her farm. nature far. I see you I do farming. want chickens. But I when want we think oh, Pamela I'm all Anderson, we think comfortable and happy. <laughs> I think we all agree on that. <laughs> oh I saw God. the documentary. She seems All right, settled. all right. But well, there is something where women, they, lonely women have lots of chickens. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be a chicken. Per I feel like I don't. I really think I have to think in terms now of like what are Neil Brennan and uh, like... <laughs> <laughs> and um, Anthony Jeselnik gonna say in the green room, it was, oh, wait, he's got chickens now, yep. Yeah, but like, I kind of have to like <laughs> back uh, Whitney, in from there. Whitney, I feel like you are a you can't nudge think about away that. from chickens. I, I feel like it's so <laughs> it's, close. I'm already, no, I'm already, trust me, I'm on Craigslist every day. You're crowdsourcing. Uh, looking at the, because the chicken eggs, you don't even put in the fridge because they have like a, a peel type <laughs> Mm -hmm. thing on the outside and you just put them out and they stay for two weeks. Do you want to know the bad Nothing. news? Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. You have chickens. Apparently Soros just bought chickens. Chickens. I'm not kidding. I, by the way, that chickens. would not surprise me in yeah. the slightest. Nothing. I want chickens. I want the whole thing. Nothing appeals to me less than trying to round up chickens from my yard. Like yelling for chickens. They're, they don't really give back. All right, listen. They do give back. On. They give eggs. They don't give oh, back. They, give eggs. they no. lay eggs every day. They don't cuddle with you, but they give you food. Even <laughs> vegans should be getting chickens and taking their eggs. You're not harming the chickens. Okay, you guys, we got to take a call, okay? These people oh, are waiting. Oh, sorry. Okay, wait. Before we do, I wanted to say oh, one thing. Oh, and we have to talk you... about Whitney's special that's oh, coming geez. out. Yes. OF.TV slash Whitney, November 15th. It's a special oh, it's called so Mouthy, and it's free. Um, Do you know why we have that book, Natasha? No. Yeah, because do we know I, why this isn't a website? Because I am a brand ambassador for the Dr. Bronner's oh, Corporation. What? Well, yes. I was like, oh my God, a book about cleaning. It is my pastime. Every once so in a I while, they, reading it. they send me soap and chocolate and a book, and they emailed me a while ago. And I do believe in Dr. Bronner's as a corporation. Like, there is a such a thing as an ethical corporation, mm -hmm. and Dr. Bronner's gets pretty fucking close. And they won't sell it to, George, or to uh, you know, uh, to Bill Gates. Bill Gates. I think that the we'll two, see. I think the two ethical corporations are the Dr. Bronner's Corporation and the Microsoft Group. That's sort of my <laughs> feeling. Would you sell a, your special corporation for $5 billion? What, what, if you had one, like you had like a 
company and you sell it for fifty thousand. Yeah, what you're what are asking you talking her if about? she would allow Bill Gates to buy her latest special for five billion dollars. <laughs> no, I'm wondering, like, no, if you had like a company, like I yes. wonder if Bronner's has. Oh a no, number. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not morally superior. No, I just you wish you thought of appeal. I mean, can I ask? You? <laughs> that would be so crazy, so Whitney, true. if you were like. It's so true. My newest foray. Angry. I didn't think of it. My newest foray into business is I have an apple preservative. <laughs> it's like, like a, it's a hustler. A, it's an apple glue. It's Apple. like a condom for apples. How do we? It keeps them fresh. How do we know it causes uh, any damage? Well, because it's made of. It's like cellophane. I mean, it's like a. So chemical. what does it do? Uh, we'll is see. it benign? We'll see, won't we? In you 30 think years when our children have horns, we so will we understand. We will see. So cancer comes from things like this. Like endocrine disruptors. Realize. Yeah. yeah. Endocrine A lot of it's disruptors. endocrine disruptors, which is what's like causing cancer. You're okay. tuned into just guessing. Here with Whitney <laughs> coming. I'm sorry. Well, 28% of people <laughs> who eat these apples have been shown to have Definitely endocrine okay. disruptors. <laughs> Like, sorry, sorry I don't have real statistics. You know what's safe, though? Who can eat an appeal apple and have no ill effects? Is a German shepherd. Guaranteed. <laughs> that it's a guarantee. That is actually true. Well, the apple cider vinegar is what kind of sh- gets all the stuff out of you. So it is kind of a sad thing. But you know what? We're going to a lot of let variables us know if you have involved. any information on any of this. I know someone out I there d- does. Uh, did you have you know you, you can, do you know Candace Thompson? Sure. Candace has got all the tea on this stuff. Okay, well, she's You know, I'm going to go actually but, not to a stand-up comedian at all for some of this information. <laughs> I think that's go, my that's the thing I'm going to try. Dude, just ask any black woman and they know more than any doctor always about this shit. Now that I'm not going to disagree with. <laughs> any all my black girlfriends I'm like, "Can I eat this?" They're like, "Are you insane?" I'm like, "Got it." By the way, as a Jew, I got a call from a black friend yesterday checking in to make sure I was feeling okay racially. And I was like, wow, mm. this is a big moment for me. Whoa. Someone's calling me to just make sure I'm feeling a black Why do I feel like this me. is a prank call on a podcast? <laughs> no, it was real. It was real. <laughs> Are you sure? All right. Okay, we're going to take we're gonna take a call, Whitney. We're, is that okay? Can you just give Please. some advice with us? Hey, Tosh. Yamush. Yeah, uh, I don't know why, but when I'm I'm looking at your chest right now, getting aroused, and I'm thinking about honey. Is there some connection between your titties and honey? Honey love bras. That must my be new it. favorite bra. You know, I haven't worn bras for like ten years, mm-hmm. and I because we've been I did- dating for ten years, and I forbade you from wearing them until we found out about honey love. Well, no, but you know, it's like the underwire. It's just like the only point was to wear underwire because it made it look better but then it's like I don't want to wear underwear so I wear a bra but then I found honey love and it is mm-hmm. literally like a second skin yeah I mean are you tired of bras that cause bulging in the back I know I am honey loves bras are designed with back smoothing fabric to create a bulge free bra bulge free you guys I don't know what any of these terms are but I'm what I do right, know can is, I take over please, well, well let me just say when I do look at you I go the, the titties look nice. No, you have complimented me when I'm wearing the bra, mm-hmm. and I am very appreciative mm-hmm. uh, to Honey Love. And listen, when it comes to shapewear, Honey Love's best-selling Super Power Short is the go-to. I also mm-hmm. use their shapewear. It has a targeted compression technology that distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas you need less compression. Their signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. We cannot lose those. Moshe would not date me if I did not have curves. I love dating you. Their signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. Plus, the best part is it won't ever roll up or down. Come on. Muffin. This is like muffin top stuff. You can't say the word muffin top on this podcast. Why? I just, I can't have you do that. I'm just just telling you. Well, have you ever been a woman wearing shapewear? Yeah, I have, Natasha. (laughs) And let me tell you this. Give the gift of comfort this holiday season. This is actually a pretty good... But let me be real here, because I don't know from bras, but I know from underwear. I, as an adult, I love underwear as a gift, because it's never anything you want to buy. You it's, just want it to arrive. Yeah, totally. And go, wow, I got underwear. Buy Honey Love bras and shapewear this holiday season. Whether you're attending a wedding, hosting a big Thanksgiving dinner, or simply seeking that everyday boost of confidence, Honey Love is a perfect plus one. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 50% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash honeymoon. This month only, inventory is limited and the sale ends soon. I just put my order in. Do not miss their best deals of the year. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. It's It's time. time. Go ahead, Todd. 
It's, it's time, time to. <laughs> okay, you can say it. No, go ahead. It's, it's time, time to ditch, ditch the, the underwire, underwire for good, good thanks, thanks to, to honey, honey love. love. Okay, All right, let's so, do it. Oh, so we're going to take some calls. Uh, nice. We're going to take a call from Natasha in Winnipeg. Ooh. I bet it's snowing because my mom told me in uh, Rockford, Illinois, it's on Halloween it snowed. Ooh. So I bet Winnipeg, Canada, it's snowing already. We definitely live in an altered Dude. state here. Natasha. Hi, Natasha. Hi. Did I, you feel self-conscious about calling our podcast with the name Natasha? A little bit, yeah. No. Did you like <laughs> always love your name? Have I always loved it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I I, I kind of go by Tash a lot, Ooh, um, but in a pro- in a professional a setting. Tash. Still Natasha, but oh, I, I know, forgot. I know the ah, You're I know. In Canada, <laughs> Natasha. It it sounds better in in America. I'm sorry. Honey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, because they go like this, and in England they go Natasha. Natasha uh, yeah. or Natasha, yeah. Natasha. Okay, it's well, such Tash. a regal name. I'm Natasha. Oh, that's Whitney Cummings, which I'm sure you already knew, but she's here with us, and we're so excited Hi. to have How you. you. How can we help you? Okay, so my problem is that I have like a creepy neighbor, and I'm not really sure how to like set a boundary with him. So he's probably like in his fifties. He moved in like a couple years ago. He's always been like really enthusiastic and will like wave and be like, oh, hi, and like comes to talk to us about, I don't know, things that aren't important a lot. And I try to kind of be like kind. I'm probably too friendly. How old? Like, Just really quick. How old? 50s. How, am I? He's in his 50s. Okay. <laughs> how old are you? We need yeah, to decide how, you? how attractive you are. To him. I'm 33. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Then he's ah, being you're creepy. in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so just like a bit of background, I'm a, I'm a single mom. Um, when he first moved in, like my ex lived with us, but he left like a bit over a year ago. And so um, the neighbor like did start mowing my lawn <laughs> last summer and we have snow already. So he started shoveling my walk. So, I mean, that part I don't mind. And honestly, like I thought he was pretty harmless up until yesterday. <laughs> so last night he comes and like knocks on my door in the evening. And honestly, he comes and tries to like talks to us about random stuff all the time. But so he'll and just, like, t- knock on your door when he knows you're home. I yes. hate that shit. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's yeah. very aggressive. No, I mean, yeah. he obviously yeah. so- likes you. Yeah. But you're, it's like, it's like walking up to someone who's on a treadmill. They're trapped. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, my yeah, bro- my totally. brother my brother was once on a treadmill, and he fell, <laughs> and to the woman Sorry. next to him, he tried to say, um, he tried to say, "I'm all right," <laughs> but he was so embarrassed that he said, "You're all right." <laughs> he just screamed, "You're all right," and then he just left the gym. So, I'm uh, thanks for bringing that out, that <laughs> anecdote out, Natasha. So yesterday he comes to the house. What happens? Yeah. So he knocks on my door, and he has these leather gloves. They're just like, you know, <laughs> driving gloves. Well, it's cold there. It's, it's snowing. He's been shoveling her snow for free. Yeah. Hold on. No, no he's no. digging a shallow grave. <laughs> they can had we knives. See? They had I knives at the, the end y- of the glove. Can I see the yard? <laughs> oh, it's just my front yard. It's not very big. Like, my backyard doesn't have grass. Like, I don't live in a fancy neighborhood. Like, got it, got it. So he's got um, gloves on. Yeah, so he brings me these leather gloves. And he's like, oh, my ex-wife was shopping. Uh, and I have these gloves. And I, I don't want them. So do you want them? And I was like. Yeah, sure. And like, I know, probably my mistake. Yeah, you got to say um, no, no receiving gifts. Yeah, yeah. So also, he's like, on. also he, killed, he killed someone with those gloves. <laughs> he's trying to give you the evidence so that he, he framed you. Okay. Yeah. So I put them on and I'm just like, I don't know, flexing my hand in the gloves because um, like I want to see if they, you know, fit. <laughs> maybe also weird. Um, and he was like, Oh, maybe don't do that too much. I kind of like that a bit too much. Oh, no. And I was like, <laughs> huh. yeah. All right. Yeah. I have bad news. I'm oh, sorry. You guys go. <laughs> no, no, you, you go. go first. You have to be more rude. Yeah, that is. And it's yeah, so, exactly. I, I know. Hey, honey, take off the mini skirt is basically what I'm saying. And way less available. Like when your door, when they knock on your door, I saw my friend do this. I was so in awe. This guy knocked on her door. She kind of saw that there was someone there and she just said, no one can come to the door. And then just like, <laughs> yeah, and, and just then don't. silence. And it's, then, then, then it's then there. What are they going to do? 
bum, 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 bum. Yeah, yeah. Then they, the only thing they can do is be annoying and then they leave. So you, first of all, start that. You are not available. It sucks that moving through the world as a woman, I'm sure guys have to do it too in some capacity. You kind of have to be a bitch. Like I pretend I'm on the phone. I've got headphones in. Sorry, I can't right now. Like you just like have to. It sucks because you want to be able to just yeah. be nice, but it's just obviously exacerbating the behavior. But Whitney, you're missing a huge part of this in your advice. Wow. She's Canadian. She can't be more rude. It's <laughs> I am sorry. I don't believe in stereotypes. <laughs> so I It is kind of true. You got to rise like, above your race. You got to do like, this you got to yeah. be more than your nationality you you don't have the instinct so you need some rules you mm -hmm. should be not like she yeah. said Kay. no gifts you can't, no really, can't yeah. receive just, any, just say no thank you you're just in crazy it's like it sucks that it's you're so trying to be, be on the spot because i think what we try to do is we go well if i'm just nice they'll go away right. that's just not how it works Listen, like he thinks you're together yeah. when you think about him just imagine him right now he's writing in his diary and he's like things are going pretty great with the gal <laughs> next door <laughs> i told her i have an ex-wife tried to drop that i'm single she she really loved the gift i gave her oh not only that i brought her the gift she modeled <laughs> Modeled it for me immediately. I would say no gifts, but she if you, showed me what she was gonna do with her yeah, hands. She's clenching her hands over you, and over again. You are busy. You are always having an earbud in your ear. That's right. You I'm on available. a Zoom. We're on Zoom. No, thank you. Hi. Oh, hey, how's it going? Sorry, I'm with someone right now. Uh, and then here's the other thing. I don't know what your financial situation is right now, but I bet you could get one of your friends' sons, someone, give him a little summer or winter job, right. shoveling your snow, yep. $25, young kid maybe pay him a lot yeah. so they'll come every oh, week oh yeah a young so, hot stud and get him some gloves just so you don't yeah. need that guy to do any of it and if he yep. says anything you know you're just like because he's already showed you he's he's gonna do more of this oh yeah so mm -hmm. now you're like here's what here's yeah like this Get the fuck away from me in your head because he's a creep. You also, by the way, him. do you have any guy friends that are just like you could invite yeah. over? They Look, I'm pitching a bad Jennifer Lopez movie, but, but <laughs> not to pretend to be your boyfriend, but just like start inviting your friends over for dinner. Like make sure he sees you've got men coming in yeah. and out. Inter just be like, no, dude. I actually and if you see him, be like, dude, do you mind just introducing yourself to this guy like I'm having a problem like just like shit like that and not coffees yeah. let's talk about it because you're not there yet and you mm. never got there you got out you you just got out so now you never have to be like he's not going to be like now that you're like being even more like unavailable he's not going to try to start asking you to go to coffee you know what I mean he also you're might like, get angry mm -hmm. and kill you but I think we're, I think this will work but he you've taken away his ability to not have fingerprints on the murder weapon with the gloves so <laughs> he probably will steer clear you should scream and you don't word, have to give him back the gloves that would be weird scream the word COVID okay yeah I was wondering next time he knocks just say COVID and then you have uh... two full weeks where you don't have to talk to him <laughs> oh you think that guy cares about COVID no he's coming in He's got sweet Natasha. He definitely Natasha. watches when I leave and come, so oh I don't think that. <laughs> Do you think that's true? Help. I think he like pays attention to when my vehicle's in the back and Ugh. stuff because there's a back lane. Yeah. But I do have a boyfriend and he actually has met him because he talks to us constantly. And he yesterday also was like, oh, how's it going with the new guy? And I was like, yeah, it's great. I, I wouldn't answer the door at all. Your, your boyfriend can answer the door only. And when he's, sorry, can't in the middle of something on a zoom call when i see people i do sometimes i'll do like a fake smile and talk like a little too many decibels too high like i'll be like hey how's it going and then just like leave uh. like try to be not or like hey yeah okay like you're do you share confused. like a hallway or elevator type do you bump into each other no no it's separate houses yeah a, a townhouse kind of thing or no no it's like we, like it's just like a regular house okay. it's just we have like a back lane behind the house that's what i mean do you have a ring camera no i would get one I think just that's get smart. it like it's just e even even if it's just to corroborate your own reality or to go like oh it's not as bad as i thought you know what i mean or you mm. might see some shit you don't want to see my boyfriend's putting it up oh did they do that okay bye yeah like You're i just, just like it's two hundred dollars it's like on your th it, i feel like it'll be worth it just for your peace of mind because if he is doing something weird just to have it where's he at politically <laughs> Like I don't RFK know. Junior Wherever guy. he is, I, go the opposite direction and put a very prominent flag outside of your house, <laughs> right? The like flag of Trudeau yeah. and blackface. Yeah, yeah, just something that's going to make him go, "Yikes! I don't want to go over there anymore." You know, just just listen. Let the LGBTQIA plus flag. D that's why I'm asking where he's at because yeah. He, yeah. He, 
And if and if he's a big ally of the gay community, you got to go in the other direction. You got to say no more drag queen story hour, but in flag form. You just have to get him away from your property. Listen, Natasha, you're going to have to release your inner bitch. It's, it's going to be good for you. It's going to help you create boundaries. It's not foreign or it's not uh, natural to you. So just get through it. It's the only. It's the only way. I think Whitney and Natasha are right in that because he's your neighbor being overtly like I don't want to talk to you anymore is probably going to cause more problems than it's worth Mm -hmm. all you have to do is start to signal to him in a passive way I no longer am interested body language sup (laughs) sup bye body language get those noise canceling headphones or these ones yeah always on a thing can't come can't come to the door oh sorry COVID you don't even have to say can't come to the door just don't answer it you're in the freaking bathtub masturbating you don't need to go tell him that say sorry can't answer the door in the bathtub masturbating with your new gloves you got me <laughs> okay, well, we really helped you. You better do this. Yeah, do it. Be a bitch. Be a bitch. Okay, I have one last question. Oh, Would that be okay? One. Yes. Sure. So, twice he's told me that he's going to buy my son a Nerf gun for Christmas and that he doesn't care what I think about say it. Say this. Say, okay. Yeah, okay. So, That's I've cool. actually had. This. <laughs> I'm on his side now. He seems awesome. Um, you can also do no gifts. I'm doing no gifts for the kid. So that's a lie, and okay. then what if he sees? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. but I, I'm just saying. Or just I, saying no. My um, uh, brother, I would always give so many gifts to the. How about nieces. no guns? It's a Nerf gun, honey. But then he'll just give some other gift. He's like just trying to get in your life. Oh, He's right, trying to right, insert right. himself into your life. Like, yeah, we don't take Nerf guns from strangers. Like, what? And also, um, uh, your boyfriend can have that conversation. That's so nice of you. Thank you for the gesture. Mm. But like right now, we have a little too many toys, too many gifts. We're kind of trying to. Cut it out. We're doing rye parenting. Would your boyfriend do that? Loved rye, by the way. He would. He doesn't do it. live with us. Like it's pretty new. I see. Yeah, that is a guys hard love out. protecting. Pretty. Ooh, this is good. Tell him this. Tell your boyfriend this. He'll love it. I have an idea. Men love protecting. I got an idea. What? Get a German Shepherd. No. It's so easy. <laughs> do that. Anytime the door knocks, there's going to be a 95-pound dog I've barking. I've never all seen a Jew be so into something German. <laughs> By the way, you know my plan is to name it. I, I have a literal naming plan. It's to name it after a Crystal Jew- Nacht. Uh, uh, no, that's not quite where I was going with it. It's to name it after a Jewish partisan who killed Nazis. Okay. So I think that's reclamation. It's okay. like, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. chopping the A off. You you sure, know? sure, sure, sure. Seems healthy. German yeah. Shepard. Listen, hopefully you're going to be a big enough bitch. Here's your goal. Be a big enough bitch that he doesn't even give you that. And ask your boyfriend, Your ask him for help. If Tell you him need it. Okay. And if, if he drops it off on the front door, maybe your boyfriend can bring it over and say, we're not doing gifts, but thanks so much, man. Happy holidays. The truth is with the Nerf gun, if that happens and that you've said no thank you and he brings it anyway, you do have this physical totem that is very easy for you to finally say it in note form. You bring the gift back to his house. You drop it there with a note that says, sorry, we aren't accepting any gifts right now. And you just, that's such a clear signal that if he doesn't get it. I like that a little too much. If he doesn't get it, (laughs) then you have real problems. Do you own or rent? Oh, I own, but he rents. Well, you're fucked. Well, listen, you know, sometimes, (laughs) sometimes guys, like I remember once I had this friend and I thought we were friends. Maybe I've said this before on the podcast, but like he had broken up with his girlfriend. We've been friends for a long time. And then like the second he broke up with his girlfriend, he tried to start like French kissing me at the table. And I was like, ew, I can never be friends with this person. You know, like I just feel like that guy kind of showed you like with the glove thing, uh, with the glove thing. Like, oh, this guy's kind of like I just was like the presumption was like, oh, I don't really I'm not friends with people like that. And I also think we do have to account a little bit for like ageism here. Like he's probably just older and thinks it's charming or funny. You know what I mean? And that like it could just be like benign. Like when guy like he is he like a dentist? (laughs) That's a great question, this Whitney. Seems like We've a all been wondering. Dentist humor, <laughs> like just like I, think I like. He might th- be a drug dealer. <laughs> okay, he's not where we. So a dentist. <laughs> um, really? Okay, and you also check your gut, like your gut, all the facts don't need. Yeah. Like, what is your gut telling you? Read um, a book called *The Gift of Fear* by Gavin De Becker. But your your gut is already obvious. You your gut is t- you called us. Your gut is saying don't talk no, thank yourself you. out of it. Don't yeah. go like, but he's nice. Okay. But he's this, and get the ring camera. I mean, if you have the courage to do it, I don't know if it's a good idea. But the 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 glove comment is so out of pocket. 
oh, don't do that so much. It makes, oh, I kind of am liking it. You have the right at this point to say that made me uncomfortable. Ugh. And I think that you need. Yeah, I just but need I think the space. guy, I think I the you. guy needs to do, I think the, the guy, just ask him for help. Well, like, because as he a woman, it's so hard to like. Because well, then you're, you're right. a bitch and now you're giving him a legitimate reason to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, that's how. That, you it can't embarrass be... him. Okay. Move to a new province. Yeah. Okay. Move to a new province. Okay. Yeah. Sell your house. Move to a new Thank province. Thank you. Yeah, All right. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck, Natasha. You got this. God, men, huh? What the fuck? God. And you she's guys like so adorable, suck. of course. I don't you guys? You don't suck, Moshe. Don't you guys? But men, God, that it's like it's such a a, a male thing to do like. Enough to make the woman uncomfortable, but mm-hmm. not enough for her to call the police. And right, if, or not enough for her to almost say anything. And if I recount the story, I kind of seem like an uptight bitch. Right. Like it's it, like I'm kind of like maybe he's just trying to be nice. Like it really is. He's and, basically saying, "Wow, your your hands like that are reminding me of jerking off." Yeah, them wrapped around my cock, leather style. <laughs> I think I guess I don't mean to take be devil's advocate. I do think most people are like do try to be funny. And sometimes just say stupid shit like that. But with all the other stuff, it's just not. But I don't have that experience with women. Hmm. I I don't see a lot of women like doing a little joke that makes me sexually uncomfortable. Now, part of that is because it's very easy for a man to become horny when a woman is making any allusion to sex whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll give you that. A I'm pregnant just... woman can make a guy. I, mean, I used to date someone who would be in the grocery store and he'd start getting a boner because he'd see a pregnant woman. So it's like just her very existence is That's like so wild. turning people on. Sure. I mean, it's hot. So you look hot. hot. Thank you. You look so delux- nice. You look like, uh, you know, the Italian Botticelli. You know? Thank you. Yeah, like, I a, like a Renaissance girl. I, and like I and like I can't get away and I can't get that's pregnant right, that's right oh yeah, yeah. You, you're you built in birth control <laughs> yeah. and you can't escape just put some leather gloves on and I will be hard as a rock they that's can right. milk her tits I mean come on hey Tosh Tomish. you know here on the Endless Honey Moon Pod we are Zoc Doc aficionados love Zoc Doc use it all the freaking time we are nuts for the Zoc uh, but I have a confession to make Yes. I got ill recently. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I used a different service. Oh, really? It wasn't like ZocDoc. I went straight to the, the website of the cl- the clinic that was nearby. I needed an urgent care situation, and I used it. Hey, guess what my satisfaction ratio was? A C? It was a zero. Oh, really? I waited on hold for like 47 minutes on their freaking app that they forced me to download. Then I went and saw the doctor. He didn't write the correct um, prescriptions, and I could, there was no phone number because it was all by this app. It just was a terrible experience compared to the ease I feel when I used ZocDoc. I, even once when I used ZocDoc, the something wasn't working with our phones, and he faced it was like per, it was like I'm, so. I'm never going back. So easy. I'm never going. I swear to God. This app that I used, it w- again, it wasn't a ZocDoc competitor. Like, it was I a, don't do portals. It was a specific... Yes, this was a portal. Yeah, it was portals. A speci- uh-uh. It was a specific uh, app for this one urgent oh my care God. in our they neighborhood. They all have a portal. Their system was that you just waited on hold until a doctor appeared. I waited for an hour and a half. ZocDoc- <laughs> I remember that. I was yeah. like, what are you doing? It was crazy. You are like, I'm waiting for a doctor to come on. ZocDoc gives you a time. And then at that time, you click a link, you're on with the doctor, or you can go see him in person, and you can triangulate it to be as close to you as possible. You can find them by by specialty. I'm never going back on ZocDoc again, and I apologize, ZocDoc. You're never going back on ZocDoc again? You know, I'm not. I'm never going against ZocDoc again. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I see. Like, I'm never going back on my word. And these aren't just ZocDoc doctors. These are like doctors with thriving practices at the head of their industries. Heck yeah. But they are also on ZocDoc. There are thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc that are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. Don't do what I did. Go to ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many available within 24 hours. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. I honestly cannot talk about this app like strongly enough like even at one point I was worried about this thing and I the doctor like took my call and I was on the road and he totally put my mind at ease like we just have a relationship now and he is you're in a relationship no I'm just saying he's now my doctor for this certain thing that's all though right just doctor yes of course I'm just saying it's like did you sleep with him oh my god that's (laughs) z-o-c-d-o-c dot com slash honeymoon 
ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon. ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon. That was really good advice. You guys helped her for you real. You helped her. Well, Forget she was so fear. sweet. And that you're was right. Heartbreaking. The Canadian thing is like Canadian people are like so nice. They well, just the, are but the guys aren't? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like tell, it's They a, just have that accent. Yeah. Why can't he be like that then? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's you're like right. if we had an Italian caller and you were like, You're gonna have to start whispering. It's like they can't do it. They can't it's not in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All no, right, what I do we know. got? We got another call? Okay. Here we go. Okay, we're oh. going to call Haley. New Zealand. In New Zealand. It's New Zealand. fans everywhere. I love it. Also, Whitney has an amazing podcast. We have to make sure we plug her podcast because we weren't plugging that Thanks. one. Thanks. It's called Good For You. By the oh. time this comes... When is it? November 15th? Yeah, it'll oh. be out. It, it'll, Only it'll fans be out. TV. Haley. Gorgio. Hello. You're not wrong. Hi, Haley. Haley, do you have a pair of leather <laughs> gloves you could wear for this call? <laughs> I mean, that's just something I'm asking. It's a you know, since question. we're already in the conspiracy wormhole, New Zealand, America, only two countries that allow pharma to advertise on television. Is that right? Why does New Zealand? Oh. I thought they were our like respite. It's just them and them. Us and them. Huh. Interesting. That's surprising. Um, I have a leather vest I could put on. <laughs> uh, Haley, can I just stop you right now and say, could you please go get a different accent? Because this is not what we wanted. To <laughs> what the fuck are you doing right now, Haley? Are you American? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Are you fucking American? Are you kidding me? Are you American? Listen, listen, I have a, a good story for you. All right. So it will involve accents. Okay. Well, we have Whitney Cummings here on the line and we're excited to hear this story. Um, yes, I am an American here in New Zealand. Um, I've been staying here for the past year, kind of balancing travel with uh, remote graphic design work. And I have a good thing going with that, with freelancing. I have killer clients, great pay, um, good work-life balance. And, so should we ask you for advice? Uh, I know. What is, uh, yeah. you, what per, you have fuck? perfect teeth as well. Yeah, just to throw that You're out gorgeous. Yeah, You've got crown fuck? molding. I mean, what I do you have, want? I have questions us? for you. That yeah. chandelier. Jesus Christ. You figured everything out. You're calling an advice <laughs> yeah. podcast? Is it just a flex? <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's a curiously comical predicament that I'm in. So um, I have found that New Zealand is definitely my place. Like, Congrats. Most of the burner parties here are <laughs> fucking amazing. Could you guys log off? <laughs> Whitney, Natasha, could you log off for a sec? We need to connect. Oh, them. I disassociated. Don't worry. <laughs> I, ch I checked out the second you said that. <laughs> okay. It's amazing. We know. So that. now we, we know what your problem is. Listen, Got it. We, yeah. We know that New Zealand is superior to America. We're, we're aware. Is that that's what you're calling to talk <laughs> is about? Is it? It feels like it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. 100%. What do you got? Okay, okay. So I'm committed to laying roots here. But um, in my research and uh, talking with an immigration lawyer, I cannot stay legally as a freelancer. I either have to get a full time job here or a partner. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> one, of, one of my new friends has offered to marry me to help me stay and help me keep my clients i like love this horror movie three weeks ago <laughs> i am so in on this murder documentary i like that every man that comes on to any caller story you go that guy's murdering you you are is, murdered yeah i'll i'll marry you, you know yeah. a lot of women murderers okay so, heard about a lot, well, a most lot of men them. aren't murderers just but most, most murder all murderers are men most Except murderers. maybe like two who murdered their husbands. A friend who were probably off, abusing okay, them. how quickly did he offer? Oh, that's well, a Well, we were partying, question. so At this a, was a discussion over a party. Uh, what <laughs> drugs was he on when he offered? There was a lot involved, but he's serious. One okay. to ten, and, what's your level of attraction to him? Well, okay, so he's a very attractive person, but get this. He is the best friend of the guy that I've been dating for the past month. Huh. So that is a wingman on an epic, epic scale. So, but the guy you're dating is not willing to marry you for citizenship. <laughs> I get that. No, I get that, he Whitney. Can't, he can't. He can't because he's he married is to another American girl. He is divorcing a French woman that he's already sponsored. So <laughs> what he the can't. What is happening Otherwise, in New Zealand? <laughs> I mean, this is clearly the set you run with. It sounds. Uh, so how does that work? So say you marry this other guy for citizenship. How long do you have to be together before you do your divorce? Five years, I think. My friend did it. and But she did it with a gay guy, so it's a little different. Yours is kind of... 
Harder. But do you have to like Two go? Years this is to like residency. that Sandra Bullock movie. Do you have to go in and? But do you have to go in? What if you fall in love with him trying to memorize everything about him for the quiz? Mm-hmm. That's a really good question. <laughs> and is he a dentist? Wait, Whitney. If that's not a movie, you gotta <laughs> I write mean, that. I'm just saying. Don't you think? Do we just call Ryan Reynolds now? <laughs> Are we making this thing? But like how how stupid is a country that they are not catching this stuff? Like Well, there's no first of all, Whitney, I'll just say there's no <laughs> there's no video evidence that she is running an immigration scam. There's no podcast <laughs> that she's called into. There's no there's no trail. There's no digital trail for her. But so okay, do you have any feelings for this guy? Right, I was trying she's to get her his level. Best how about friend. this? How about this? Sorry. What's in it for him? Yeah, okay, so we've discussed this and we feel platonically towards each other. We have a lot of love towards each other. That's not but, good. Um, okay. All burners love each other, Whitney, just so you know. We're all yeah. connected. We're all connected. I know, We're, it's like a beautiful money's culture. not real. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are... You guys I grew up poor, worked my whole life to make money, and you're just like, money isn't real. I'm like, yeah, it is! You know, you know what's real is poverty. Poverty's real. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... Okay, so, okay, so you have discussed that he's down. What is your dilemma? Should you do this? Or should you just find a job at Baskin Robbins? <laughs> yeah. Should I take this opportunity or is it going to mix things up too much within my new community? And what's in it for him? Well, he is interested in American passport, but virtually it's a big sacrifice for him. Like he wouldn't be able to sponsor anyone else while he's with me. Could so. you pay him three thousand dollars or two twenty five hundred? For five years of a fake marriage? <laughs> She's about to pay him zero. <laughs> but how is this gonna thwart his romantic life? Right. And do you guys only date people from other countries? I'm confused. In New Zealand the right of ascension into manhood is that you sponsor a foreign woman <laughs> into a relationship in New Zealand. Like, <laughs> Wait, that's kinda nice to know that we can go to New Zealand and get like married. I know. I'm uh, oh I'm W. They love American <laughs> accents and I love their accents. Ooh, so they like our accents. Works I get so you it. Get they married. really do. They really do. I, I think what we need to know is what are the actual physical requirements of this marriage? Do you need to co co uh, co cohabitate with him for two years? I have five months to get documentation of our relationship of living together yeah cohabitating uh bank records are you gonna co are you guys i gonna am a graphic designer oh, so. Okay. <laughs> wait, so now you're gonna you're admitting to a scam immigration marriage and forging documents to prove it hey what's wrong with you this is terrible you shouldn't be calling this podcast no listen you need your help <laughs> it's like i think that you it, to me it has to be a business arrangement Let and i ask, think you need to work yeah. out all the details what does the new guy think of all this the new guy that you do have feelings for his friend he's supportive um he thinks that it would be a bit harder for me to get a full-time job here it would mean a pay cut and like having to be locked into one place but you can for still freelance the with the full-time job right what's that you can still freelance if you have a full-time job no, because it would be a full time job, and then I already have so much work uh, with the freelancing. Uh -huh. I'd I have see. to give up these clients that I've worked hard to build. Love or money? Here yeah. we are. Could Fake you... love, sham love, or money? Could you move in with both of them and let him and pay for his rent for like as much as you could, as long as you could? He's like... already willing to do it for free. Why are you? I know. I know. I know why so. she is because she's saying. So you don't feel the, like you owe him. Yeah. The mm. fact that it's like I'm doing this because I care about you. Then the minute you guys have a weird fight or something happens, you break up with his best friend. He can just be like, well, state of, you know, New Zealand, we broke up or he can ruin. What if he divorces you? <laughs> 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 what if he meets? So if I met, if I met someone who was three years into their he, fake marriage, I, that's be, a deal. Breaker. I would be bummed. Me too. I would be super bummed, but it seems like you guys are pretty casual. Over there. <laughs> can I drop, can I drop um, uh, some info that will not come as a surprise to anyone? Mm -hmm. I know a number of people that have done this in the United States and oh. guess what community I know them from. I swear to God, it's all Burning Man people. Yeah. I don't know what's happening in that community, but clearly Drugs. there's something. Yes, it is. Everyone's Drugs. polyamorous. Yeah, that could be part of it. <laughs> oh, God. Gorgeous land is important, and being in a beautiful place that is your place, I think that is worth it, you know? So it's like that is a big thing. You're not doing this for, like, free rent or 10 grand. You're doing it for, like, actual citizenship. And Did you say you after three years you're permanent? Well, two. 
too. I mean, uh, that's, I feel like if you really worked it out, had a meeting with him and made sure he got a little something out of it. Cause you also don't want to feel like. Could he employ you in a fake job? There's been talks about that, but I fake just really jobs don't feel better than my fake design marriages. Work. But yeah. fake jobs feel better than fake relationships. You think? Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. You could pay someone to say, could I be your full time assistant? Right? In your- oh no, the the government would check to make sure that they're actually paying me because they want the tax money. They yeah. could actually pay you and then you can't just pay them back. Yeah, you bring a wheelbarrow full of uh, <laughs> whatever whatever they use a for money. A fake job seems easier to procure. As someone that has many friends on payroll and fake jobs, it's like I feel like is that not something you can do? No, that would take a while to process and it would actually be more simple and direct so the government over there their computers work through with a partner <laughs> visa i think what you need to do is have a meeting with this person and really lay out all of the possible permutations. like when you make a will Haley, i know you're not thinking about the end of your life but you should start soon i know it'll happen less uh last in new zealand but it'll still happen they go through all these scenarios have you made a will I can't, uh, she's ta- having a baby talked so she- about it yesterday well they do this thing where they go what by. happens if you die what happens if you die yep. and your partner dies yep. what happens if your partner doesn't die but you've just started dating like they and go you through just these- cheated like it's every iteration it's right? so morbid and you've things you've never thought about uh-huh. you need to think of every possible scenario where this could go wrong and bring it up to this guy and say here's what happens I break up with your boyfriend I break his heart I cheat on him then what's going to happen? What's going to happen if you start to resist? What's going to happen if you start dating someone and you want to get married to her? You just got to get to that end of the tunnel, which is that date. Here's yeah. the date, you know? And I think that, it, do you, and do you trust that he's not going to like try to extort money from you or something? I, yeah, I think I do. Uh, I don't have money and neither does he, right. so. <laughs> you just said you had money. You're hey. making good money. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think we figured it out. You're lying, I mean, Haley good yeah you know, but let me what's the alternative I get by. you have to come back to america for a couple months and commute like what's the longest you can she stay? wants to live here forever I know, i'm just curious what's the longest you can stay in new zealand a year without being mm-hmm. a citizen well the situation is i have five months until i have to leave and then i have to stay gone for a year before oh. i can re-enter the country wow. so the clock is ticking listen when i was 23 in new york some friend needed citizenship and i came home and he was like, I'll give you five grand. And I barely knew him. And I told my Nana and she was like, you would give up the Legero name for five thousand dollars. <laughs> he, he was going to take your name. Oh, I, yeah. yeah I don't know. She was it. like, that's what you're worth. And I remember I was like, no, I can't do it. But I didn't give a shit. I don't think it's that big of a deal for yeah. two years. Like if you can make it worth as wild. It's like, oh, no, the guy can't. He has to say that he's all of the friend circle says they're in these relationships. You get a prenup. Yeah. <laughs> You right. get a prenup, which is kind of saying I don't totally trust you, even though you're doing me the favor. But then you have to pay a lawyer two thousand dollars. You get a legally binding something. document uh, to protect you in case your scam falls apart. In ca- yeah, well, and in mm. case he does too much MDMA at one night, <laughs> he will. And, yeah, and right. Needs- what happens if he overdoses at a burner party and dies? Are you still cool? What happens? Eighteen months in, <laughs> he fucking takes a little bit too much DMT, and he just seizes out and, d- and runs into the fire. Now what? You're a widow, but are, do you have? He falls off his to- bike in the mud. He falls off his call bike. <laughs> CTE, and then you legally have to take care of this invalid. I mean, this is a nightmare. But it it, it continues to be a movie, no matter how you slice it. Listen, two years is definitely doable. Just make it yeah, worth his while. Definitely. Try to make it as legal as possible. Get out if you notice anything weird when you she can. She can't get out. She's stuck. <sighs> you can be estranged. I would do it is all I'm saying. I would do it, but I would really take time and go through every situation and just do some pros and cons and kind of like recon and like, uh, you know, really figuring out different scenarios. Get high. Think about it. I would just like really make sure I covered my bases. I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about him like getting some girlfriend. Yeah. Well, that's going to be, yeah, like, be like, well, why not you did this girl? If you're married to this girl. You did her a favor. Well, How come she doesn't owe you this and this? And you could technically to, have her house. That needs to be in the thing. That's what I'm worried about. Haley, I can see in your eyes that you've already decided. And you're doing this. Yeah. So be careful as you do it. It's yes. so obvious that you're doing it. I'm, we all knew from the <laughs> beginning. I don't know why you're even calling and ask. So just make sure you do it smart. Make sure you do it smart. Well, I guess 
I want to ask, like, what should you know about a person before? Make sure they're not the kind of person that would offer to marry an American <laughs> for no reason. I don't get what's in it for him. Yeah, I don't, don't know. I, well, ask him. That's the coffee. Anytime that you need someone to have. is going to do you a favor, I'm like, what's in it for them? Nothing is free. I don't believe in favors. You Look need for to have He a- just loves. His friends so much, like they okay, well, are that thick makes as thieves and would do anything. Do you have for to fuck other. him in front of your friend? Yes. I feel like but that's because she's a burner. Burner, that's not but it's a burning man thing. Stuff. Yeah, that's a no, rule. I, in our I community. think this burning is where, pee. This is where Haley's like your boy. You want your boyfriend to be like, "Whoa, Haley, taking this kind of seriously, huh?" And you're like, "Yeah, I am." You know, like I want to have a meeting with you guys. I've been thinking about this a lot. I just want to make sure I'm really set up for success. Like, I want to make sure you do this, but I want to make sure the wrong question. What How long has the guy been out of the marriage with the French gal? <laughs> Five months. Oh, my God. But it was a marriage of convenience? It, this was also a fake marriage? No. Well, no. They were married for seven years. It is legal Zoom just a dating app over there? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. There's no separation between Tinder and their immigration department <laughs> in New Zealand. It's, the same. it's sort of the same department. I just don't want you to be a rebound for a guy that just got out of a marriage. You know what I mean? And you're gorgeous and you're young and you're smart and you're amazing. I just, I don't know. How old is he? What, is that, what does that term rebound mean to you? Because I don't really believe in oh, it. Oh, there we go. Oh, the God. You and the burners. <laughs> the burning you don't man believe in this socially for you. <laughs> construction. Well, they're all polyamorous. So I don't even understand how do you get married when you're polyamorous. I have a, I have a real bit <sighs> of... Oh, I know what she wants to do. She wants to fuck him to Christian the... How long was he marriage. with the French lady? Seven years. And he's been out of it five months. Yeah. And you're his, the new girl he's dating. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been going really well. It's like uh, a beautiful connection. Not Um, beautiful enough for him to propose, but But beautiful enough for his best friend. I'm going to have my best (laughs) friend do it. No, here, I have some real feedback. (laughs) I think that the, that probably what's happening, knowing that you said burners, I think what's happening is that that community is like, I know that community and it is Whitney this will blow your mind but there is in the community like a vibe thing of like you know what this is a person in our community that needs something and needs help she loves my best friend I love my best friend I'm just going to do it because this doesn't have this this construct of like married not married doesn't mean that much to me I'm just going to go for it help it means her a out. lot to the jury and the judge I'm just saying <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad no, that I'm, you guys make up your own rules no, and statistics no I'm on your side I think actually, that's awesome I'm on your side what it's I, one week a year where these rules matter <laughs> <laughs> one week a year but what I'm saying is that's the vibe and that can be intoxicating where you're like, oh, like, oh, yeah, it's all yeah. just like vibes and love and, and community and it's all good. And what Natasha and Whitney are saying and me is don't just like get like intoxicated by the vibe. Make sure that you can be intoxicated by the viability. Make sure that this will work. Yeah. Like make sure that you're doing it responsibly. But we can't guarantee anything will work. But just we? make sure you're doing it responsibly and, and not talking, just like. And, and reaching out to someone who's been through this i think that would be really maybe there's a support group like that's i think it's just like protect yourself yeah but also protect yourself legally in general when you're young finding someone who has accomplished what you want and asking them how they did it is a very successful way to go about doing things so i would try to find one or two other people who've been through this who can like tell you a few pitfalls and just make just you can like set yourself up and maybe there's something you can put in the arrangement to figure it out and save yourself so you know just becoming a little more informed i think I think Reddit might be your friend. <laughs> oh, For yeah. real. Go to Reddit. I, I almost guarantee R slash fake arranged marriages or immigration <laughs> wedding. I'm sure it's no, out there. No, she doesn't want that in her search history. No, then get a VPN. It's really simple. Get a VPN. And, and I mean, she's on a podcast with video. I don't understand this part. But go to Reddit and say, here's my situation. Here's what I'm thinking about. Are there any nightmare scenarios that I'm not thinking about? What What am I missing here? Get yourself informed because as I as I, I I know that the community feels like they'll care for you no matter what, but things do fall apart even in and especially in non traditional communities. Things sometimes fall apart. Just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into, and then go go make this decision with an open mind, uh, with a uh, with open eyes. I would say. And is there a punishment if you get busted? That would be deportation. Nice. Right. They deport you if they find out. They send you to Mount yeah. Doom with Frodo Baggins Believe and you have to me. throw the ring in. <laughs> There's definitely enough sexual energy between her and her boyfriend's friend that they can pull off that they're married. <laughs> <laughs> you can already tell. They're all polyamorous. They might Is live that true? Together. She was joking. Uh, 
I don't know about sexual energy, but they're both gorgeous. They are very handsome men. Mm. So like this can work. It will work. There you go. Yeah. I told you you're going to do it. Just do it responsibly. <laughs> Make sure you do it responsibly. Yeah. I think that's She smart. has bangs. She's going to do whatever the fuck she wants. That's right. You're right. <laughs> Okay, well, good luck to you, Haley, yeah. and uh, we love you, and I'm happy mm-hmm. for you. Do it, girl. Two years? Come on. You could do it. Thanks. I'm, I'm spreading the good word about your podcast in the Australasia region. Oh, we have to have you there. You absolutely do the yeah. marriage. If you're telling people about our podcast, stay in Oceania and tell everyone. Yeah. Good yeah, luck. and come on down to Kiwi Burn March. All right. All right. I'll see <laughs> you're you there. You're talking about where you're gonna live for the. You're where your kids are gonna like plant their, you know, roots. It's like, of course, it's worth it. It's two years. Like, you got to figure out how to do it and do it smart. All right. Yeah, I want this really Peace. badly. Stay yeah. fierce, girl. Yeah, stay fierce, Haley. No matter what. Thanks, guys. Goodbye. Love Thank you. you. Bye. Love you too. <laughs> Whitney, we've had a journey. <laughs> Whitney, you seem floored. I. You would never do this. I need to go for a walk. Um, I, I, um, I don't know. I, I really want to get married. That's my new. I do things mm. backwards. I know I don't do them the order everybody else does them in. I really want to do that. But um, yeah, usually people get married, have the kid, and then do the OnlyFans special. <laughs> <laughs> you did the other way around. Look, I'm just, you know, I don't need to go to Burning Man to <laughs> scramble my expectations of the social construction. People go to Burning Man to fucking live the way I live that with this true. weird, like, backwards shit. So you're, you you dream of of a, of a marriage. I would like to have a th- partnership yeah. the way you guys have it. I just hadn't found, I feel like I was finding a lot of fathers and a lot of husbands, but not both. Right. Mm. So now I'm like, who's that person? But I also wasn't fully cooked yet either. You know, I didn't trust my judgment until I very recently. It, I'm excited for you. I, I think there's someone who's... You I never had so your too. equal. That's I don't know what that means, but I'm trying to wrap my head around that. It means someone who is matching you and, and maybe not the same as you, but evening out, balancing out, and like... I'm actually weirdly... Um, not the traditional is probably not the word. I'm weirdly not alpha in my relationships, mm-hmm. and it's hard because I think I attract... Betas uh-huh. that want an alpha, but I really want someone to out alpha me. Uh, I see you now that you have a child. Uh-huh. I see you the the husband. This is my prediction for you. Oh, oh tell the me, husband tell me. that's coming mm. also has children, and you have a brood, and you I have like a giraffe, yeah. like- three children, <laughs> a Malinois, and and my re- German Shepherd that I bring to your property I'm after it bites literally, someone. Literally, it's the only breed I cannot co-sign, and it's not the oh it's not God. the German Shepherd's fault. They're just inbreeding them too much. Oh my yeah. God. And they get sure. hip dysplasia they're very young, so they're in pain. All right. Well, listen, we've kept you long enough. We have Whitney Cummings. Please check out I her hope new this special. People are happy. Oh, uh, people are happy. With okay, wait, good. Your new special. That's the old ones on. There's one Netflix. on OnlyFans. Okay, so so I did one on Netflix. This was like, I, do you feel like sorry that when you do a special, you put it out and then you start writing your next special? No, I don't. You just start putting jokes together. Yeah. See, I've never done that. I've always been like, okay, now what's the next special? And I'll start writing and I'll be like, well, this doesn't really go with that thematically. This was the first time I just was like, let me just These not, are just jokes. These are just like whatever I'm interested in talking about. Like, or instead of going like, oh, I should stay away from this topic because in a year it's probably not going to be, you know, relevant or like, I just was like, let me just write for me. And I end up, you know, I have like 30 minutes on trans people, which I was like, I never would have wanted to put that in a special because I'm like, oh, it's going to get me in trouble. It's going to get me can't. Like, it was all kind of just like. You have a special coming out that has 30 minutes on trans people so about yeah that is very interesting oh no on only fans tv there's no censorship like it's totally free and it's their first special they're doing a lot of like remember we used to have like live at gotham we used to have sure. these like things where like comedians like like we can get specials on netflix and like well, that's so awesome that we get to do that but like there's so, there's leno's gone letterman's got like that whole thing so they're doing these specials that have comedians doing like 15 minute sets 10 minute sets like you know five or six of them and so they've been doing that it's called uh lmfao like a lot of our friends have been on it um it's so hard to be able to be like a would you call it middle class comedian? I hope that doesn't come off insulting and like get any kind of. Well, there's no, but there's, tape. there's no access, but the internet is access. Right. They right? either want Dave Chappelle or that's nobody. It. it. That's or you're just like doing TikToks or whatever, having to film your own crowd work. And it's like, right. it's hard to get a Netflix special. So I am doing their first uh, hour special, but they were like, but they were like, you can do anything you want. I mm-hmm. want to bring back half hours. Yeah. Why do we have to do an hour every I, three years? Um, this is something that Moshe and I debate all the time. I said, I have a Joan Rivers album. It's 32 minutes. Yep. This is what she used to do. Yep. And then when we were on the road, I was on the road and I told Moshe, 
I was like, I just want to do 40 minutes. He's like, you need to do, you know, your 45 minutes. And then the club came up to me and they were like, could you do like 40 minutes because, or 35 to 40? Because we love it when people, then we can turn over the room. Yeah. And clear. then I don't understand, like, why do I need to be the hour is up our, there is for The so hour long? is always just so it can be submitted oh. for an Emmy. It has to be 60 minutes. Also, mm -hmm. if you're paying, if you're doing theaters and people are paying $280 of to course. sit in the first 10 rows, you don't want to do like a 40 minute show. But, but it used like, to be like an hour club. special. It's like people have got gotten to the premises, whether it's on Twitter or in a meme yeah. or whatever. Doing a half hour a year, I feel like is so much cooler than an hour every three the years. The HBO comedy ha half hours was the greatest. Those were the greatest specials maybe ever. I, I agree. loved it. But there's no home for it And anymore. then OFTV just goes like, well, what what time should it be? 34 minutes, 28, whatever. Also, Comedy Central hours, those weren't an hour. They were 45 they were, minutes. Because there was commercials, right. you know? So right. this whole thing where we're like spending three years putting an hour together is a little nuts. So it's like, I kind of want... Whitney, you are so smart. You're so ahead of the curve. You're so funny. Thank you so much that. for coming. Also, the Good you. For You po Good for you podcast. Mm -hmm. I was on it. I think I showed you my C-section scar on your podcast. That sounds like a very... I feel Good like I would have posted moment. that. Okay, I'll show you then <laughs> when you change. Yeah. I feel like I would have posted it. Um, is there anything else you want to say? No, I just love you guys. Thanks for we having love me. love you too. I Thank you for coming, good. Whitney. And we're so excited for you on this new journey in your life. We'll see. We'll no, see. Talk. No matter what it is Bubby. that you cannot expect, it will be good and exciting and new and different and it will revolutionize the way you look at the world. I, that I know for sure. Thank because you. Because it happened to me. It your happens to everybody. Will I needed a little uh, software update for my Ooh. way I see the world. So I love, love that. that. Looking forward good, to some emotional growth. Such a good image. Such a good image because it really will. It will. The update will come and and then it will shit. There's like a wild <laughs> clarity that is comes with it already. And let me know if you want to start a, d a vinegar distillery together. Yes. So That's we can call Shark Tank. Start um, having you know apple cider vinegar, homie. I could see how like old ladies. Not that we're old, but I could see how like. Because I remember uh, Gloria Swanson, she, like in her old age, she was obsessed with like tonics. Like I can see how like when you're an elderly Tinctures, actress. I like, can see. We can start an apothecary. <laughs> but like in it. 30 years or uh -huh, whatever. Yes. You guys should totally launch a vinegar line. I mean, <laughs> literally, I think you literally should. I'm not Salty kidding. bitches. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Acidic Only women. Only fans slash vinegar. <laughs> I would totally do a vinegar line with you, honey. Oil and vinegar? It's like, we don't get along. I love that. Check I'll out. do the face oil, you do the vinegar. This is straight up a good idea. I love it. Your okay. movie that you pitched is good. Um, <laughs> Murdered in New Zealand and in Canada, oil and vinegar apothecary, and of course, Whitney's new special on OnlyFans, OF.TV. OF.TV slash Whitney. It's totally free. Heck yeah. Check it out right now. Whitney, thanks for oh, joining Oh, also us. this Dr. And I, and I say <laughs> in it. <laughs> That's Whitney. great. <laughs> Whitney, this is, we, we were like doing so well. <laughs> I'm just saying that's the level of uncensored you could do on this network. Well, not on this podcast. And that's why we beeped Shit. out what she just said. All right. We'll talk to you later.